the best tagline for this movie is Magic Mike with dad bods. I think that works pretty well. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing Back on the Strip. So what's about pretty simple premise? It's kind of not what you think when you watch the first 20, 25 minutes about a kid who loves magic and his dream is to do magic in Vegas. Well, what do you know? He's in Vegas, not because he did good in high school, just because his mom said you got to live your dream. So he's in Vegas. He's about to do some magic shows. But however, something happens to his pants. His pants falls down and they realize, wait a minute, he's got a third leg and we're going to get this Chippendales. It's called like the black chocolates or something chips. The black chips, I think that's what it's called actually. Or the chocolate chips, chocolate chips. There we go. And you know what? The show is coming back. And like I said, Magic Mike with dad bods. So do you like this film? I thought it was a very competently well-made film. Great location scout. And I'll get to that when it comes to Vegas and living in Vegas and seeing all the stuff that is occurring on screen. But for being a two-hour movie, this did not need to be two hours. And Tiffany Haddish did not need to narrate this movie with voiceover. It just didn't need to happen. Sometimes it got annoying. And some of the dialogue just didn't feel like some of these characters would say it in real life. But let's talk about the pauses of the film. Like I said, the location scouting work. And what do I mean by that? I kind of get sick and tired when you have these movies that are based in Vegas. Then you show like the Las Vegas Strip. And then they're randomly in Red Rocks Casino. Or they're randomly in the Hard Rock Casino, which is now the Virgin Casino. Which they do show the Virgin Casino here. But they're not perfectly saying, oh, the Virgin Casino is on the Strip. So this is very smart when it does it. And also there's this scene where it's like an apartment complex like right, right next to Mandy Bay. And if I'm not mistaken, that's almost the exact uh, apartment complex that's next to McDonald's, which I always go to when I go to March Madness because I usually go to Mandalay Bay when I do my March Madness betting. This year we're going to go to Laughlin. We'll see how that goes. It's mostly just Caesar properties there. But I think it'll be an interesting scenery change for that. Also, when it comes to the actors on screen, they know exactly the parts they're playing. I want to say Kevin Hart's in this movie, but he's maybe in this movie for two minutes. You have J.B. Smooth. You have it's our great Owen. Sorry about that. Wesley Snipes. And you have other characters as well. I guess it's Tiffany Haddish. And I think they do pretty well in this movie. With that, though, Tiffany Haddish, she needs to control her annoyingness. What do I mean by that? In Haunted Mansion, her annoyingness is played the part as being this psychic or this say, saying whatever they do what are they saying saying it's not Dragon Ball Z they could talk to the dead but here as a mother character some of the dialogue things she say just don't make sense like oh the son is jerking off it's like who says that to their teenage boy like that makes no sense like maybe I just was raised in a different family but there was never sex talk like that between mother and son like, I, I just find that really, really awkward. And some of the voiceover just didn't work for me. Like, why do we need her to narrate the story? There is no need for her to tell this story. When she's in the movie, she's telling a story. There is no reason for me to say, oh, my son is doing this, or this person's doing this, or Rita's doing this. No, the dialogue is already telling me what they're doing. I don't need a, her to tell me again what is about to happen again. And there are just, you know, tropey characters like Blazin trying to make fun of the, you know, prank culture of YouTube. And it is a very predictable movie that does feel forced and rushed in some scenes. But when I say it's rushed, it's rushed in the wrong spots. And it's just weirdly two hours. I don't know how this is a two hour movie. They could have taken out good 20 minutes of this movie and it would have been a lot better. But as a very, very low budget movie. I expected a lot worse. I did not see the trailer going into this movie. And overall, it is an enjoyable experience that I said, you know what? I had a good amount of chuckles and ha, that's pretty good joke there. So back on this trip, we'll receive a two and a half out of five of food taunts, which equals at 50%. So see the correct shooting scores gave this one. And man, it's been a minute since I've seen Wesley Snipes actually on the big screen. Yeah, he wasn't like coming to America but not on the big screen. So you have critics a 27% with 11 of them, audience score 50% with fewer than 50, no critic consensus. So yeah, 
We had the 50s and the 27. Chase Hawk with the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if things boop on Topia. You boop on have a great day. Now, I care watch this say tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. I love every single one of you. And kind of like I said to the back, uh, like first reaction, the people that are also in this has also done movies like, uh, oh yeah, I want to get Gary Owen, Doctor X, which the Doctor X character is is pretty funny, but they decided to do to go that route. Yeah, the house next door, Undercover Brother Two, uh, he was also in Meet the Blacks. So if you know those type of films, this is what you're going to get. And like I said. Vegas, I love.